G'day Rogers and Rogers and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to go ahead and share just a whole bunch of different things that I got up to in the past week and a half. There isn't really any theme towards this video, I just wanted to share some new fish, a new food that I ended up getting for the 5 foot tank which is why you can see all those little particulates floating around. Um, however, yeah, just a whole bunch of different shenanigans and, and classic bodgy chaos that I wanted to share. It's part of the reason why I didn't upload last week, purely because there was so much going on. Went on a fishing trip, fish shopping. You'll see all of that in this video. However, if you do end up enjoying it and you like all of this chaos, you want to see more, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. But I'll let you experience this, uh, this smorgasbord of, of, of little clips that I've got for you and let me know what you think at the end but enough talking from me I'll talk to you in a little bit in the car and uh, let's 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 just go from there <laughs> all right we're doing a little uh, we're doing a little car vlog that's 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 what's uh, what's happening now <laughs> uh, can you realize I haven't done this before because I got no idea what to say well if it isn't evident I hope it is now um, well I'm going to the gym now and after the gym I'm gonna go to Aldi and pick up some uh, some fish food, surprisingly. Well, no, I'm going to buy a, a one kilo bag of bassafillet, which is uh, essentially Pangasius catfish or iridescent shark, uh, which is a freshwater fish. It's not a shark, but I'm going to buy a bag of that and also a bag of marinara mix so I can chop it all up and do some meal prep for the bloody hell, that was fast. Because uh, I can do some meal prep for the freshwater stingrays, my Australian lungfish, basically all the little predators and, and fish that prefer eating their meaty food. So the phone's going to fall down now, isn't it? Oh, no, we're good. Um, so yeah, all the fish that will enjoy eating their meaty foods are going to go and buy some of that and chop it all up. But gym first, then uh, fish food shopping second. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I know I came here to go to the gym, but the pet barn is right here, and I was like, oh, I should go in, see if they have any crickets or mealworms so I can feed the fish. We'll see what they have. Okay, we're here. Now, they've got really, really tiny crickets, but I've got fish that will eat, you know, bigger size than this, so probably might just go for that. They've got freeze-dried, well, which would be really cool to just store it. That looks so morbid, but game's the game. Um, small, I reckon we'll go for medium, because I feel like the fish would definitely eat medium. Yeah, let's grab that. You guys are balancing on my steering wheel. Veal? I could do with some veal right now. Look at this. This is peak filmmaking. You guys are balancing on my steering wheel in a very precarious position, but we should be fine. I'm I'm a very tired mess right now. Gym was very, very intense. Um, however, now I'm going to drive to Aldi and see if they've got... Uh, Bassa and also marinara mix. I really hope they're open. I can't be bothered really checking and plus it's like 30 seconds away So I'm just gonna drive there and uh, we'll see what happens. Game's a game. All right, let's let's go You guys can't stay on the steering wheel though. Where's where do I put the key in the car? Oh There we are Aldi. I gotta go in there. I want to procure the goods and then come back. All right So that was shopping. You know what I need to buy? I need to buy one of those um you know those like things that you attach your phone to so you can view the GPS better? Usually I just have it like sitting somewhere inside the car and I just listen to instructions. But, oh, this guy's busy. I love how when I turn on the indicator they, they start speeding up. Come on guys, basic driving rules. Oh, I almost thought you guys were going to fall off there. Um, anyway, shopping was eventful, so... Oh, actually sort of eventful. Um, Aldi didn't have the marinara mix that I normally get, so I had to go to like the vegetable shop next door. Um, and they had like some weird off-brand uh, marinara mix, which I mean technically it's all the same But at the same time, I don't know. I just didn't feel uh, Didn't feel right carrying out the, uh, the Ocean Royale bag, which is the brand that I normally get However, what I've realized is that when I get my own like little freezer in the new fish room because right now in the current house I'm limited on freezer space. I've just been allocated a small section in our family freezer for me to use um, For fish food and stuff like that But when I've got my own like little mini bin freezer I'm probably gonna make my own marinara mix which will just consist of like a kilo of everything that marinara mix normally has which is mussels prawns fish meat uh, calamari baby octopus, stuff like that. Um, and that way it'll be more cost effective and I can basically just make stuff in like five kilo batches. Um, probably get some sort of cheap. 
now that we've got all the marinara mix back home, I've got to chop everything up into more bite-sized pieces. Even the pippies are a little bit on the larger side. However, don't let everything thaw out completely. Have it a little bit frozen, and that way it's going to be way easier to chop up and deal with instead of when it's wet and it's going to be super fibrous. Okay, so I've got some of the food here defrosted. Let me actually show you the feeding and how well the fish take to it. So as it goes in, because of how small I chopped it, there's a whole bunch of different like sizes of actual food that the fish have available to them. So all the big stuff sinks down to the bottom almost immediately. And that gives my freshwater stingrays. We've got maple and we've got pancake over here. The freshwater stingrays have access to it. All the clown loaches have access to it. Um, my plecos and also my Australian lungfish, which we see right over there. So all the big guys have access to everything that falls down the bottom. There's also a ton of little particulates that are suspended throughout the water column. That gives opportunity for species like my black belt cichlid, my wild oscars, and even the clown loaches that prefer to, to eat some of the smaller foods. They'll basically just like sift through it in the open water column. But it really does give opportunity for all of the fish to eat. All of that food that landed down the bottom there's pretty much nothing that's on the sand bed now because everything's small enough, all the fish can pretty much one shot bite everything. So yeah, super awesome. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so they're able to just eat everything in, in one bite because everything's so perfectly bite-sized. And then whatever's left over, the fish like the waru, my flagtail prochilotus, the snakehead gudgeons, they'll just pick it up out of the water column and they thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, so the new fish room build is happening within about four to six months. That's basically when I'm gonna be moving into that room. The plaster gets done at the end of this week, so we're moving pretty, pretty quickly. And my new year's resolution, or new half year resolution, is to minimize the amount of new fish that I'm buying, purely because last year I went crazy. That was my year to experiment, get as many different fish as I want to experience what I like and what I don't like. And I think I've found my middle ground of where my likes and dislikes are. Um, so with that being said, I wanted to minimize the amount of fish that I buy now because when I do the move, it'll be a lot less stressful, a lot less fish I'll need to transport or put into temporary housing until their aquariums get set up. However, I have found myself in a couple of precarious situations where I didn't know I wanted to fish until I saw it and then I had to buy it or I've just been offered a fish and I'm like, oh, I can't really say no now. So <laughs> that's how Inferno came to be. Inferno is the big Oscar that you see swimming around in the five foot aquarium. Uh, he was offered to me purely because he was purchased and he would have been too small to go into uh, the tank that the original owner had planned him to put him in because that tank had a whole bunch of larger Oscars and there was a really high chance that he just would have got beat up and potentially killed by the original stocking in that tank. So that's when he was presented to me and I'm like, not really looking for a vibrant man-made strain of Oscar purely because I really love my wild uh, and you know more blander colored fish but I was like there's a chance this fish dies when it goes into its new tank and I'll I'll take it. So Inferno is now in the five foot tank and I still don't know how I feel about this fish. He's so personable which I hate because I don't really like the way that he looks but he's in the five foot now and I'll just see what happens. He, um, he greets me when I come up to the tank, he's the first one to feed, and because of that I am, I am involuntarily developing this emotional attachment. It's like Stockholm Syndrome almost, I, I just, wait, it's not as serious as Stockholm Syndrome, so, bleh, Stockholm Syndrome. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I like him, but I don't like him. That's, that's where I'm going for. Also, I did also, I need to take a speaking break. Also, I did end up getting some waru amphicanthoids. I've got six waru cichlids in the five foot tank now as well. Completely unplanned. I did not have them on my mind. I didn't have them on a stocking list. I had no intentions, but I saw them and I was like, I have not seen these fish in many, 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 many years. I have to have them. 
They look super cool. They're just the, the most picturesque fish. Everything that I want. Ugly, not that colorful, not that vibrant, but a cool body shape, really cool behavior and patterning and, and all of that. I gotta have them. So I bought them and uh, yeah, they're in the five foot tank as well. So impulsive purchase, but worth it. They're cool fish. They're in here as well. I'm so disappointed in myself. Why am I doing this? So after Inferno went into the five foot aquarium and also I, I did end up getting a group of wild Oscars, but that's they, I definitely want to dedicate them their own video. They're way too special. Not that Inferno isn't special, but again, you know how I feel about that fish. Um, so I did get inspired to do a little bit of painting and I wanted to paint an Oscar. Originally, I wanted to paint the wild uh, Mil Miljoki Oscar. I, I'm butchering that Latin name, but it's a, it was a newly discovered Oscar species that I wanted to paint. However, I then just thought, let me go the more classic Tiger Oscar route. So I did some watercolor paint, but I, look, I'm not the, the best artist in the world. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I use watercolor paints almost like you would use acrylic paints. No, other way around. I use acrylic paints the way you would use watercolor paints and just building up layers. And I'm pretty happy with the way the Oscar actually turned out. I'm not really all that sure what I want to do for the background. I kind of want to go for more of a biotopy vibe instead of a solid color for the background to get some roots and leaf litter. It's just that this is probably the most detailed painting I've ever done, so I'm not really sure how to proceed with the background. If you've got any ideas after seeing the time lapse that you've been watching as I've been talking, please definitely let me know in the comment section down below because I'm lost. I, I really don't know how to take this painting moving forward. If it looks good the way it is, definitely let me know as well. <laughs> so that happened. I also did go fishing. Although I didn't capture any of the, uh, or I didn't record any of the fish that I caught, I thought to mention it, I went to Queenscliff with my best friend to go fishing. Um, we generally go with Queenscliff Scenic Tours and Fishing Charter. Really great people. They take you on a four hour trip and it's around $120 per person. And it's really, really awesome because it's a, it's a great experience if you don't have a boat and you can't take it out onto the ocean for fishing, but you want to definitely experience that then I highly recommend that you go and check them out. Great blokes, great fish. We've got some pinkies, flathead and whiting, all the classics, and uh, yeah, they taste so, so good. The other thing I did was um, Sea Life Melbourne Aquarium recently opened their new $9 million big oceanarium exhibit. I wanted to visit that for such a long time. I was always keeping up with what, the way the renovations were going and everything like that. So I checked that out. At the moment, it's very light on the stocking. So they've just got some of their larger rays, larger fish, some of the more peaceful sharks like the leopard shark. Um, and there's also way more fish to come. So they've really gone for a more night aesthetic, tropical reef vibe. Uh, really, really awesome looking tank. And I also am gonna make a dedicated video about this new exhibit purely because I think there's so many things that people are missing out on right now. Um, one of the biggest complaints people have had is that the tank looks murky and I wanna talk about all of that in a, new, in a new video that I actually dedicate towards this exhibit purely because I think it's super cool what Sea Life Melbourne Aquarium does and um, yeah, there's just some uh, really awesome fish that they have in that tank that I wanted to, to, to capture and uh, I'll share some of that as well. The green sea turtle that they have, the leopard shark that they have, which is my favorite species of all time. It was just awesome. So yeah, got up to that and that's pretty much it. So I really hope you enjoyed the shenanigans that I got up to this week. Just no real rhyme or reason for me to upload this video except for the fact that these are just a whole bunch of things that I captured and I wanted to share them with you, bodges and widgies. If you didn't end up enjoying this video and you wanted to see more videos like this, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. I do a little bit more preparation and actually record things that have some sort of meaning behind them. I was very much inspired to make this video by Nicola, who is also a fellow Australian YouTuber. She has just finished her marine biology degree, so definitely check out her channel if you want to see a lot of uh, traveling and uh, just ocean related stuff. Really, really awesome. She's been a long-term idol of mine in terms of what she does in the marine biology and uh, marine conservation and awareness uh, route. So make sure you definitely check out her channel. It'll be linked in the description down below. But Bodges and Widgies, thank you so much for giving me your time and watching this video. <laughs> I've got definitely a lot more proper, meaningful videos coming out soon. Some of the stuff of the Sydney tour that I did, that I did still has to come out, uh, but a bunch of other stuff that I've got planned. But Thank you so much for watching. As always, stay happy, stay safe, stay Australian. 
Bodgy and this goddamn annoyingly squeaky chair out. See what I mean? See what I mean? It just squeaked again.